before I say this, I would like to say thank you that we have been invited here, and I hope we will be invited another time, Saeed, and others. Uh, I'm the chairman of Treasury Peer. Treasury Peer is an organization that is a community and network of thousands of corporates all over the world and non-financial companies, of thousands of uh, group uh, treasurers and thousands of finance managers and corporate finance managers. We meet regularly in roundtables like we did today and we do tomorrow uh, and yesterday. We do benchmarking, we do research, we talk, we comfort each other, we, sport, we uh, are, are challenging each other, we find solutions for each other. And we have done, <coughs> since 2008, we have had a m massive amount of, of meetings uh, with policymakers, but also amongst ourselves. And what we can see clearly is that the regulatory intent of pushing financial risks from the bank out in the real economy has affected us. And quite frankly, before the financial crisis, you wouldn't even think about us. So what happened during the financial crisis was that <coughs> for some odd reason, uh, it was decided that you're gonna increase the financial stability by having banks focusing on investment in governments and push financial risk out into the real, real economy. Some claim that increases the financial stability, but I think that can be discussed. But that made us, I mean, in 2009, we had meetings where the discussions were, where do we find the money? And I know you were cash strapped, but we realized we have to find the money in our own cash flow. So we started to hoard cash. And that also gave us a paradigm shift. Previously, we went to you, the banks, and we asked you, please, can you lend us money? And we give you collateral, negative pledge, what kind of collateral you needed, covenants. We treated you and gave you information for that money. Now, you come to us and say, hi, guys, you have a lot of money. Can you lend? Can we lend you the money and you give us collateral? And we say, hello, we don't know how to uh, sign a GMRA. We don't know even what it is. Oh, that Bible we're talking about now. And the GMRA is probably more pro problematic to understand than the Bible. So we are in a very strange situation. And this means that we are the, for the first time becoming clients to the banking and financial sector. Because previously we went to you because we wanted something from you. Now you went to us because you want something from us. And that changed the perspective. And this are obviously uh, uh, pens, but this is how you can symbolize a non-financial company that has a lot of competitive pressure and where the king, the, the customer is king, the red pen here symbolized. Everything revolves ab around the red pen. And customer is king, and customer is an awful person. You can't live with the customer, and you can't live without them. The reason is, they always want higher quality, lower price, more volume, faster, faster, faster. And if we don't deliver, someone else will. That is competition. So we have to adjust everything. And just look at Whirlpool. There are six people, six people handling a multitude of tasks, making multitude of decisions every day, and they manage it. So everything that doesn't have to do in a corporation with supporting what the client wants, is the client prepared to pay for what we're doing? Yes or no? If no, we don't do it. And this has led to that we are extremely, extremely efficient. Our supply chains are phenomenally uh, uh, efficient. Look, for instance, at something like a fridge. Most of you don't know how a fridge works, and you don't care. Because you go to somewhere, a shop, the producer of the, the, the fridge has been putting together from su suppliers supplies from all over the world. It's a fairly complex. I, I happen to have a Master of Science, so I know how it works. It's a very complex piece of equipment. 
you take it home, you plug it in, and it works for 15 years. This byte is complex. And you, it works for 15 years for less than $1,000. So it's less than $100 a year for have a fridge. How much does a bank account cost to have per year for a medium-sized enterprise? It's more than $100. And compare the complexity of the products. So if we are having this picture, who do you think that represents? From our perspective, it represents the banking sector. <laughs> it's extremely filled with pen or silos, if you wish. It's intertwined like this. Basically, because we have regulation, no one really wonders and understands. But also, it's so overcomplicated. And one thing you should notice also, there is no red pen there. <laughs> you are very nice to us. You sell us things, but you sell us what you want to sell us. And then we come to you and ask for what we want. And now you come to us and ask for our money on, and you want the collateral. It's fair, but what's in it for us? I want to make one comparison. Yes, you see fridge for less than $1,000. It's an amazing achievement, amazing achievement. Compare that with the product development we're talking about now, SEPA. It's a hallelujah thing. What are we going to do? Yes, we will have payments in euro in one day. And there are several different ways you pay. But what is a payment? It's a booking, right? It's an email, basically, with some extras on it. Why does it take one day? I can bet with you that if the private sector would have developed a payment system, it would have consist of one payment format, payment would not take longer than five seconds, and the cost would be close to nothing. So we are a completely different league, and now we are, when you want our money, the red pen. So you need to deliver this product so it's easy to plug and play in, and you know, I wrote that answer, alternatives, and it is also easy documentation. And that is maybe uh, what you need to know, uh, because we finalize here. And I thank you very much. I thank the panel. I thank you, the audience. You've been a lovely audience and very helpful. Thank you very much. <laughs>